Ted Lasso was a show near and dear to the hearts of many. It had a three season run with consistently strong writing and great acting. However, it's best known for its wholesomeness. The world can be a very cruel and unforgiving place, so for a lot of people, Ted Lasso was the show that they could escape to and watch as an infectiously nice guy went around making everyone's lives better. But now the show is over and people are looking for something, anything to distract them from the harshness of reality. I mean, it's no surprise that people are clamoring for a Ted Lasso season four or even a spin-off. Heck, even the actors and creators of Ted Lasso are reportedly missing that show desperately. Fortunately, I'm here to tell you that you don't need to wait for Ted Lasso season four or even a Richmond spin-off. No, Apple TV Plus already has the perfect wholesome replacement lined up. It's a little known show by the name of Shrinking. So what is Shrinking even about? Shrinking follows Jimmy, played by Jason Siegel, a man who's essentially hit rock bottom after the unexpected passing of his wife. Not only that, but his relationship with his daughter has become very strained and Jimmy is unsure of how to both fix himself and his bond with his daughter. Funnily enough, Jimmy is a licensed and practicing therapist. His entire job is about fixing and mending people and their relationships, yet he is unable to apply it to himself. Eventually, Jimmy gets tired of listening to people and their problems and instead decides to tell them exactly what they need to do. He even goes out into public with them to show them how to tackle their problems. As you can probably tell, Jimmy is no Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is about a guy improving everyone's lives around him, whereas Shrinking is about this group of characters who all have their own baggage, each trying to make the other better as a person. And luckily, all the characters are fun to watch. Except for Liz. She was just annoying. She was always there when you didn't want her to be. Jimmy is a pretty good lead, and Jason Siegel is a good fit for the character. He does a great job of showcasing how far Jimmy has fallen, whilst also showing brief glimpses of the man Jimmy used to be before his wife died. It makes it very easy for us to root for Jimmy, because we know that deep down, he's a very good man who is just going through a very difficult time. We see his inner goodness in the flashbacks before his wife died, and through him genuinely trying to help his patients. However, we also know that no matter how depressed Jimmy is, it's no excuse for him to neglect his daughter, who is also grieving the death of her mother. She's lost her mum. She shouldn't have to lose her dad in the process too. The show does a great job in developing their relationship, and I like that even though he starts off in the wrong, the relationship isn't one-sided. Sometimes, his daughter is the one in the wrong. And it really helps to show Jimmy's growth throughout this first season. Both Jason Siegel and Lucita Maxwell had great chemistry and were able to fully realise this core aspect of the show. However, the true standout of this show has to be Paul, played brilliantly by Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford has a bit of a reputation for being a grump and doesn't seem to really care about the projects that he's in. Whether that's true or not, it's a belief that many have of him. However, in Shrinking, you can tell that he actually wants to be there. In fact, Harrison Ford apparently even declared Shrinking script the best that he's ever read, something which came as a shock to both writers of the show, Brett Goldstein and Bill Lawrence. Yes, you did hear that right. Shrinking is co-written and co-created by Brett Goldstein, most famous for playing everyone's favourite character in Ted Lasso, Roy Kent. So you can probably understand how this show is able to have such a similar vibe to Ted Lasso. And before anyone corrects me, I am aware that there were more writers on this show than just Brett Goldstein and Bill Lawrence, including Jason Siegel himself, who is also one of the co-creators of this show. And Bill Lawrence is the creator of shows like Scrubs and the co-creator of a show that you may have heard of called Ted Lasso. I'm really laying on thick how much of a spiritual successor this is to Ted Lasso. But anyway, we were talking about the great Harrison Ford, who delivers an even greater performance here. Paul is essentially the wise mental figure to every character in this show. And the majority of the moments in this show where there is true pathos and deep emotional weight come from Paul. And that is all down to Harrison Ford's fantastic performance as the character. Yeah, I agree with Harrison that the script is really good, but the character would not have been as compelling without him in the role. It's not just the more serious moments in the show that he nails, but also the comedic moments too. There is a scene where Paul takes some gummies, and it might just be the greatest acting that I've ever seen from Harrison Ford. It's absolutely hilarious. I also like that Paul is just like the other characters, in the sense that he has his own baggage that he refuses to face. And just like everyone else, he's encouraged to finally tackle it head on. 
Honestly, this show is worth a watch purely for Harrison Ford's presence in it. He's that good in my opinion. Next up is Gabby, a character who really grew on me as the season progressed. Like Jimmy and Paul, Gabby is a therapist and I like seeing her and Paul team up against Jimmy when he tells them of his new approach to his patients. In fact, her relationship with these two characters is the main reason that I like her so much. When she's paired with other characters like Sean and Liz, I usually just sort of switch off. Though that might just be because I really don't like Liz. Gabby's at her best when the show treats her seriously and dives deep into her relationships with either Jimmy or Paul. I think it's because Gabby's baggage is nowhere near as compelling as Jimmy or Paul's or Alice's issues. Alice is Jimmy's daughter by the way, I think I forgot to say her name earlier. So Gabby's issues are treated a little more comedically and it meant that I never really clicked with her as much as some of the other characters. But like I said, her character grew on me and a lot of that is down to Jessica Williams' performance. She's also the character that I'm most interested to see what the show does with going forward. Then there's Sean, the one patient of Jimmy's in the show that Shrinking decides to focus on. Sean is an extremely nice guy, but his past experiences have led to him struggling to cope with PTSD and anger issues. You really root for him because he really is a good guy who often has other people's interests at heart. However, again like the entire rest of the cast, he hides away his problems. I like that even though the two develop a nice friendship, Jimmy is still Sean's therapist and still does try and get him to open up. It's an interesting dynamic the two have and I also love that Sean often returns the favour trying to improve Jimmy's relationship with his daughter. Since Sean is the only main character who is actually a patient, I think he is the character who perfectly embodies what this show is. He's a good man who lets his personal demons prevent him from reaching his full potential and it's a good thing that Jimmy is there to help him get past those demons. The last character I'm going to talk about is Brian, Jimmy's extremely positive best friend. Everyone needs a friend like Brian who brings nothing but joy into their lives. However, I like that the show demonstrates the negativity of positivity too. Brian has a catchphrase that goes, everything goes my way. Whilst that phrase does wonders for someone trying to get themselves through every day, it is by far the last thing someone wants to hear when their wife has just died. And it should come as no surprise that Jimmy and Brian's friendship falls apart after that. Luckily, this is a wholesome show about people improving, so it should also come as no surprise that the two are able to fix their friendship. Brian is a fun character, and I like that this show does delve into why he needs to constantly tell himself that things will go his way. All in all, this show is really good, but it definitely isn't as good as Ted Lasso was. On the one hand, this show isn't finished like Ted Lasso is, so it hasn't had the opportunity to develop its characters and story enough for it to compete with that show. But on the other hand, there are a couple of issues that hold this show back in my opinion. Both are minor and easily fixable, but it would be remiss of me not to mention them. First is that the actual therapy part of the show takes more and more of a backseat as the season progresses. Yes, it never outright disappears and the characters are constantly helping each other and giving therapeutic advice, but in the later episodes, it feels like we're doing a lot more side quest stuff adjacent to the actual therapy. Yes, this stuff does build the characters and can be funny, but what is the central premise of Shrinking? It's about Jimmy helping out his patients in ways that a therapist never would. I personally feel like we see less and less of that as the season progresses. Again, this isn't a massive issue as the creators apparently have seasons long plans for this show and that likely means that we will see more of Jimmy helping his patients out in unorthodox ways. It's just that I wanted to see more of it in this first season and felt that like it got overshadowed by less important stuff in later episodes like everything involving Liz's character. The second issue I had with this show is that this show loves race jokes. There are a lot, a lot of race jokes in this show. Also, somebody's gotta tell this white lady she needs to back up a little bit, you know? I should point out, I am also uh, white. You are so white. Okay, so are you, Paul. No, I'm not. I'm a silver fox. That's true. Thank you. Yeah, just be running around Pasadena getting in black women's Teslas. Just gonna leave your car here? I'm a white guy in Pasadena. The cops will probably just take it back to my house for me. Must be nice. Now, race jokes aren't inherently bad. In fact, sometimes they can be pretty funny. In actuality, some of the race jokes in this show made me laugh. But there are a lot of them. You could easily turn this show into a drinking game with how often a joke about race is made. So what's the issue with these jokes? One, there's just too many. It gets old very fast and sometimes it feels like the writers can't think of anything funny that doesn't involve someone's race. Also, if you're not into this style of humour or you're just someone who gets tired of it really fast, then you could bounce right off this show. Secondly, it also results in this show often diluting its characters down to just their race, which weakens their characters and makes them more one-dimensional. When I think of characters in this show, I shouldn't be thinking about their race. 
I should be thinking about their personality, their motivations, their desires, etc. The characters in this show are good. I don't know why the writers keep reducing them down to one trait that doesn't even matter. Again, it's not a big deal, but once you notice it, it's hard to ignore it. But outside of these two very minor issues, shrinking is very good. You no longer need to cry over Ted Lasso's passing because shrinking is here to fill that void in your heart. With its great characters, incredible acting, especially from Harrison Ford, overall strong dialogue and some genuinely funny moments, I think Shrinking is a very easy show to recommend and I hope that in future seasons the show is able to improve and come just that bit closer to Ted Lasso's level. But those are just my thoughts on this show, what are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Did my constant dislike of Liz in this video irk you? Is she actually your favourite character in the show? If she is then let me know why below. Also if not Liz then who's your favourite character in Shrinking and why? And when you go down there, be sure to hit the like button. It significantly boosts this video's chances in the YouTube algorithm. And if you feel like it, then please do consider subscribing. I'm hoping to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of 2024. It's looking very doable. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.